An important part of a data scientist's job is to explain model predictions. Often, the person receiving the explanation will be non-technical. If you start talking about cost functions, hyperparameters, or p-values, you will be met with blank stares. We need to translate these technical concepts into layman's terms. This process can be more challenging than building the model itself. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. In this video, we will explore how you can give human-friendly explanations. We will do this by discussing some key characteristics of a good explanation. These include whether the reasons are true, given at an appropriate level, and the number of reasons provided. When it comes to the individual reasons given, we must consider if they are significant, general, abnormal, or contrasting. Along the way, we will use SHAP plots to ground the characteristics with an actual explainable AI method. This will show us how these methods can be used as a basis for human-friendly explanations. If you're not sure how to interpret SHAP plots, then check out this playlist. I have loads of videos on the topic. Also, if you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course. With shifting public sentiment and movements to regulate AI, like the EU AI Act, factors in machine learning like interpretability, safety, fairness, and transparency will become more important in the future. The course gives you the tools to help stay ahead of this trend. Let's start by discussing what you're explaining and who you're explaining it to. As a data scientist, you will need to communicate with a variety of people. These include colleagues, regulators, or customers. These people will all have varying levels of technical expertise, and you'll need to adjust your explanation based on this. Depending on the question, you may have to give a global or local explanation. This is similar to the concept of a global or local interpretation. We make a distinction because the information you present will differ to what you as a data scientist have used to understand a prediction or model. So we are considering interpretations as the technical foundation for explanations. A global explanation is needed when you're asked to explain the model as a whole. We want to understand what trends are being captured. We may need to answer questions like, which features are most important? To answer these, you can give feature weights or importance scores to a data scientist. For others, you may need to add convincing stories about why a relationship is important. A local explanation is when we explain individual model predictions. Usually, we'll actually have to explain a decision that has resulted from a model prediction. We may need to answer questions like, why did we reject this loan application? Or why was I given this movie recommendation? Model predictions will be the core drivers of these decisions, but there may be other factors like regulation. When answering any question, you will need to give more technical explanations to a colleague or regulator. In comparison, customers would expect simpler explanations. Customers will also usually require a local explanation as they would only be concerned with decisions that affect them personally. We focus on this scenario, that is explaining individual predictions to a non-technical person. When we talk about a good explanation, we mean one that will be readily accepted. In other words, it should convince the audience that a decision was correct. To give such an explanation, there are some key characteristics that you need to consider. To put these characteristics into practice, we will use the insurance data set. We use features like a person's age, number of children, and whether they are a smoker. We use these to predict the amount they pay for health insurance. So, using this data set, we create one-hot encodings for the categorical features, train an XGBoost model to predict charges, and interpret the model using a SHAP. We won't go over the code to do this, but you can find a link to it in the description. It may seem obvious, but a good explanation should be true. This may be harder than expected when we consider that we are explaining model predictions. The issue is that these predictions can be incorrect. For example, a model may be overfitted and predictions are made using noise in the dataset. As a result, an explanation for these predictions 
would not reflect the true underlying relationships in the data. When giving explanations, we need to consider how well a model represents reality. We can do this by evaluating the performance of the model using metrics like accuracy, precision, and recall. Even with good overall performance, some predictions may be more uncertain than others. When interpreting a model and providing explanations, we must consider this uncertainty. The way you phrase things is important. We rejected your loan because you are a cryptocurrency trader, you work in a risky industry, or your income is too unstable. Are all the same reasons, but phrased differently. Some ways of phrasing things will better get your point across. Some people may also find certain ways offensive, such as the first one. You should also refrain from any technical or business jargon. Income has a positive parameter in our model and your income value is low. So you were rejected as your income has significantly increased your default risk. This is a bad explanation as we have used technical jargon like models and parameters. We also have some business jargon like default risk. People only want the main reasons for an event. If you've ever been rejected from a loan or insurance application, you'll have experienced this firsthand. In my experience, companies will usually only give one key reason. Let's take another example. Why is inflation so high? A good answer would be because oil prices have increased. In reality, inflation can be caused by a combination of factors like wage growth, high government spending, or the exchange rate. But these may not have had such a significant impact as rising energy costs. When it comes to machine learning, people do not want to know how every model feature has impacted the prediction. Generally, explaining the contributions of one to two features is enough. The question is, which features do you choose to explain? The next four characteristics can help you select the most appropriate reasons. We should select the reasons that are the most significant. For machine learning, this means we explain the features that have contributed the most to a prediction. Reasons based on these features will be readily accepted as it can be easier to understand why they have had a material impact on the decision. Take the Shap waterfall plot for the first customer in the insurance data set. We predicted an insurance charge of over $26,000 and we are comparing this to the average predicted charges across all the customers. We can see that Smoker is the most significant feature as it has increased the predicted charge by close to $14,000. On the y-axis, one equals Smoker indicates that this customer smokes. So if the customer asks, why is my insurance charge so high? A good explanation could be, you are a smoker. This may be enough to convince the customer that the insurance charge is correct. If we wanted to be sure, we could mention the second most significant feature. Looking at the y-axis, we can see that this person is 62. So we could also follow up with a second reason. And you are old. We might want to phrase this one in a nicer way. For the second reason, we have guessed the relationship with the target variable. That is, as age increases, your charges increase. The relationship for other features may not be so obvious. So to give a good reason, we may need some context for the feature values. To do this, we can use the scatter plot of SHAP values. We can see that as age increases, the SHAP values increase. This tells us that older customers are indeed charged more for insurance. A good reason could be one that explains the decisions for many customers. Why did you reject my loan application? because you have a lot of existing debt. This is a reason for rejecting many loan applications. So its contribution is widely understood. In other words, it is likely to be accepted as it aligns with a customer's intuitive understanding of the banking industry. For ML, we can find general explanations by looking at some measure of feature importance. For example, permutation feature importance. We could also use a mean SHAP plot. This gives us the absolute mean of the SHAP values for each feature across all the instances in the data set. A high value indicates that a feature has made significant contributions in general. From this, we can see that Smoker is the most significant feature when it comes to predicting insurance charges. 
We can also use this plot to find abnormal reasons. In other cases, a good reason could be one that is not common. These would be able to explain a significant contribution to a specific decision. However, in general, they would not be able to explain decisions. Why did you reject my loan application? Because you are a cryptocurrency trader. These types of reasons may be accepted as they are more personal. That is, the person can understand how it has impacted them specifically. We can find abnormal reasons by looking at a combination of feature importance and contributions to individual predictions. These would be the features that do not have a high feature importance. However, for specific predictions, they have made a large contribution. Yeah, you can see the waterfall plot for the second customer in our data set. To explain this one, we may jump straight to the age of the customer. However, notice that children has also made a significant contribution. Looking back at the mean shaft plot, we see that this feature was not significant in general. In other words, the number of dependents may be a good abnormal reason. And we may prefer to give this one as the main reason. Often, we will need to explain a decision in contrast to another decision. A customer may not ask, why was my application rejected? But why was my application rejected and theirs accepted? It may be that both customers have high existing debt. This reason may have been accepted for the first question, but not the second. In other words, we will need to give a reason that explains why the two customers differ. For ML, this means we need to base our explanation on features that have different values for the two customers. The features will also need to differ in a way that would lead to a different prediction. For example, we may find that the first customer has a high income. This is not a good reason as high income would not lead to an application being rejected. In a later video, we will see how individual effect plots can give contrasting explanations for linear regression. By nature, shaft plots also allow you to give contrasting explanations. However, this is only if you want to compare predictions to the average prediction. It is easy to answer questions like, why is my charge higher than average? To answer questions like, why is my charge higher than my sister's, will take more work. These last four characteristics may seem to contradict each other. An abnormal reason cannot be general. An abnormal or general reason may not be the most significant. A contrasting reason can be neither significant, general, or abnormal. However, remember we can use a combination of reasons in an explanation. And the reasons you choose will depend on the question, person, and what you believe will be most convincing. This intuition is built through experience dealing with customers in your industry. If you want a more hands-on approach with the Prying the Shaft package, then check out this video. Otherwise, you can find loads more XAI content in this playlist. Also, remember, you can get free access to my XAI course. 